Good morning, church. As Ben alluded to, we're in a bit. We're in the series on the biblical home. Today's message is on the biz- biblical husband. The biblical husband. Now, as I say that, um, wives, don't check out because <laughs> you're going to want to hear about what the husband is supposed to do in his role in the biblical. Uh, role of husband in the uh, God-ordained role of marriage. A husband and wife were going through a rocky phase and were giving each other the silent treatment. One day at the height of their hostilities, he realized that he needed his wife. It's a concept right there we could spend a lot of time on. But he needed his wife to wake him up at 5 a.m. so that he could catch an early morning business flight. Not wanting to be first to break the silence, he wrote on a piece of paper, Please wake me up at 5 a.m. The next morning, he woke up to discover that it was 9 a.m. and that he had missed his flight. Furious, he was about to confront his wife when he noticed a piece of paper on his pillow. (laughs) The paper read, It's 5 a.m., wake up. (laughs) Understanding the biblical roles of marriage, husband and wife, and how God has designed these roles. God, not Pastor Mike, not Pastor Scott, God. God says men and women were created equal in the sense that they're both bearing the image of God, created in his his image. And in that creation story is where we find the institution of headship of the husband and the instituted helper of the wife. It's important to hear these words for you. Don't sit there and nudge your husband going, I Hear for you and take it into your heart what God has for you today. Apply what you hear today to you. Surrender to God what is holding you back from following God's design and God's word. We start in Genesis 2, 18 through 25. Then the Lord God said, it is not good for man. It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Now out of the ground the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the livestock and to the birds of the heaven and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. And while he slept, while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed it, closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. And the man said, this, is, this, this at least is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife. They shall become one flesh. The man and his wife were both naked and not ashamed. In the spiritual partnership we call marriage, two equal image bearers of God are joined. And the man bears the responsibility to lead the partnership in a God-glorifying direction. God designed man with a heart of masculinity that wants to be benevolent towards his wife, a heart to provide and to protect and to lead in marriage. It is with that same heart that a woman's mature femininity is free, desiring a relationship where affirming and receiving and nurturing come from a worthy man found in strength and leadership. Women have a created, designed heart to be a man's helper, to follow his lead, to live on his provisions, to find safety in his strength. And men was created with a heart to provide all these things 
and then the fall. Sin enters into the garden, and everything is touched by it. In conflict between men and women, husbands and wives, was given birth. A husband's relationship with his wife will be ter- determined by his relationship with his Lord. The closer a man walks with God, the closer he will walk with his wife. We're told this truth, and we even agree with this truth. But here we are today, seeing and some of us facing the struggle of understanding each other and each other's roles in marriage. From time to time, time, divorce rears its ugly head inside the church as much as outside the church. May God help us. Pray with me this morning as we enter into this sermon. And let's ask God to help us to understand. Father, as we pause, we just ask that you enter into our hearts, that you meet us today, each and every one of us. You know where we're coming from. You know what we're struggling with. Father, we just ask that you teach us, that you fill our hearts and our minds with the things of you, that we'll not be distracted by the things of this world. Father, for this time, we'll focus our attention what you have for us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now that the introduction is done, let's get to the sermon. 1 Peter 3, 7. Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as a weaker vessel, since they are, since they are heirs with you to, a, to the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Women, wives, do not... Sit there and bristle up, because we're calling you the weaker vessel. This is God's design. Remember that. Three points today. The first one, a husband's calling to learn. A husband is called to learn. That comes out of this scripture. Live with your wives in an understanding way. Is there a husband here that says he completely understands his wife? I see one. No. (laughs) As husbands, we are commanded to learn about our lives. In learning, think about things that you've learned in the past. Some things come pretty natural. They're easily understood to us, while other facets of life are really hard to understand sometimes. We have to buckle down, hit the books to understand maybe some on-the-job training. Maybe we seek counsel from somebody about a situation that we're going through. It's the same way in marriage. Some things come easily. Understanding when I leave the toothpaste on the sink instead of putting it back on the shelf, that bothers her for some reason. These things come easily. We understand these things. While other times understanding her can take a lot of time. A lot of OJT, on-the-job training, being a husband. Maybe we... Read God's word to find out what it has to say about being a husband. We seek godly counsel. Have you ever come home to find your wife standing at the sink? You walk in, you've just got the, maybe got the newspaper out of the mailbox, and you you come in, she's standing at the sink, you say, hi, honey, and you get a, (sighs) kind of look at her, but don't really give it a lot of thought, and you go sit in your chair or maybe sit down at the kitchen table and you start reading your newspaper. And as she's washing the dishes, as she's putting them in the other side, it gets louder. Crash, crash, crash. Maybe from the table to the chair, you go, honey, is everything all right? You know something's wrong. You put down your paper and you go in and you go to, you go to touch her and you get... She, at that point, is what we call closed-fisted, closed-spirit. But husbands, you have the ability to open that spirit towards you. 
point is, it takes a long time. You're not perfect, and neither is she. We, as husbands and wives, need to allow for grace. The grace God has shown you, you should show each other. This command of God to understand her includes understanding her weakness. What this does not mean is that she is in any way weaker intellectually, not weaker spiritually, not weaker morally. But what it does mean is that we are commanded as husbands to learn is that our wives are usually weaker physically and that in marriage, a woman does not have the same authority. God's design, God's design of marriage is that a woman comes under the authority of the man in the relationship. That she submits herself to her husband. In this fallen world, men must not use the, their position of authority for exploitation in the realm of marriage. No, it's just the opposite. We're to honor the woman as the weaker vessel in marriage. Remember in 1 Peter 3, 7, likewise, husbands live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel. What does showing honor to a woman as a weaker vessel look like? Remember your wife. Hear this, church. Remember your wife is God's daughter. There isn't anything a father wouldn't do to protect his daughter. We're to show honor to the woman as the weaker vessel. What does showing honor to someone look like? If somebody of honor walked through that door this morning, it's hard in our culture today to pick somebody that everybody would seem to honor or want to honor because there's very divided lines in our culture today. But let's just say for this crowd and for this audience, I think I'm safe with using this guy as an example. And if he was still alive, if he walked through that door today, if Billy Graham walked through that door today, the majority of us would honor him. Ah, oh, honor him. Ah, oh, look who that is. What might we do? We'd want to make sure he has a good seat. We want to make sure he's comfortable. We want to honor him. Think how they used to honor the kings back in the day. We've all seen movies and pictures of Kings sitting on their thrones and people standing around with big fans and fanning them. Maybe somebody feeding him grapes. Somebody propping his feet up on a stool. Husbands, can you imagine honoring your wife in this way? Honey, come sit right here. <laughs> Let me get the, fa the kids to fan you. <laughs> the other kid to throw grapes. <laughs> no, honoring should look like this. Includes the action of showing respect and being thankful for her and her role in which she lives out in your marriage. God's word, Proverbs 31 says, and her children rise up, call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellent, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Husbands, your wife, is a blessing. She is to be praised for her part in the marriage. When was the last time you praised your wife for anything, husbands? As a husband, you are to honor her because she will be, she will share in the same inheritance as us, a place called heaven. The results of showing honor to your wife, praising your wife, 
learning about your wife? 1 Peter 3 says this, since they are heirs with you to the grace of life, so that your prayers will not be hindered. So that your prayers may not be hindered. Remember, a husband's relationship with his wife will be determined by his relationship with his Lord. The same is true in reverse, and his relationship with God will be hindered if his relationship with his wife is not right, is not done in God's design. Our second point, a husband must, is called to lead. A husband is called to lead. First one, a husband was called to learn. The second one, a husband is called to lead. Ephesians 5, 20 through, 22 through 24, husbands and wives. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. God commands for husbands to be the head of the wife in marriage and to lead. Remember, this is God's word, not Mike's word, not Scott's word, God's word. Husbands, it is the manner in which we lead many times that gets us in trouble. We are commanded to lead as Christ leads the church. How did Christ lead the church? The simple answer is he loved it. He called it into existence. Honey, will you marry me? He called the church into existence. Follow me and I'll make you fishes of men. He physically fed it. He made a lunch feed 3,000 plus. He protected it. And he calmed the wind and the waves. He cleansed it, wrapping a sash around his waist. And he took the bowl and he washed the disciples' feet. He sacrificed and served it. This is what Jesus did for the church. And he went to the cross. These are all things that he did because he loved it. He loved the church. Men, husbands, are we willing to do that for our wives? To provide these things. What he did not do was demand people follow him. No, that would have been an, a lordship or dictator style of leadership, and that was not Christ's style. Matthew 20, 25 through 28 tells us, but Jesus called them to him, and he said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be your slave. Even as the Son of Man came in not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. John Piper says it this way, headship, leadership, is not a right to control or to abuse or to neglect. Rather, it is a responsibility to love like Christ in leading and protecting and providing for your wife and for your family. Yes, Jesus came to serve and to sacrifice for the church, so how much more should we take on the position in our marriages? So that in submitting to one another, it is seen by the world as an expression of love for one another, but also an expression of love for God. As two are filled with the Holy Spirit, husbands and wives who are filled with the Holy Spirit serve one another. They, humbly, they humble themselves and get down low to lift each other up at times, to find ways to submit their immediate preference for comfort to the needs of the other. Listen to the worldly style of leadership compared to the biblical style of leadership. The world says a leader should be proud. The Bible says a leader should be humble. Worldly leader, not accountable to anyone. Independent. A godly leader welcomes accountability. Worldly makes decisions without counsel. Godly 
seeks counsel before making decisions. Worldly, sinful communication. Lies and anger. Biblical communication with grace and control. Worldly, pleasing self. Godly, pleasing God. Worldly, expects others to change. Godly, is willing to change himself. Worldly, he expects others to serve him. And godly, he serves others. The greatest example of a godly leader is that of Jesus. Matthew 20, it shall not be so among you, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first among you must be your slave. Even as the Son of Man came to be served, not to, be, not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Yes, husbands, Christ gave his life for the church. Are you ready to give your life for your wife? Our last calling as husbands that we're going to look at today, and our third point is a husband is called to love. We had a husbands are called to learn, husbands are called to lead. Husbands are called to love. Ephesians 5, 25 through 33. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle, or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is found, and I am saying profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. A husband's love for his wife must be a choice to give sacrificially. Christ's love is the, is the love upon which a good marriage is built. That love, the love Christ demonstrated on the cross, cost him his life. Does your love cost you anything, husbands? Does your life, love for your wife cost you in day-to-day -day living? It cost Jesus, and it should cost us. Notice I said us. My wife will be sitting in the audience next sermon, so pray for me. <laughs> now, our love should cost us something for our wives. We should hold them up. We should love them. We should love them as Christ loved the church. How did Christ love the church? We've gone over quite a few of these already, but we love our, li we love our wives first. We love because he first loved us. We love our lives, our wives most. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. We love our wives sacrificially. Husband, love, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Love our wives accepting of their faults. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We love our, li our wives with action. <laughs> Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. We love our wives without bitterness. Husband, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. These are all teachings from God's word about how husbands are supposed to love their wives. The results of that kind of love, God is glorified. 
the gospel is properly displayed and our lives influence the lives of others around us. In conclusion, a statement. Husbands, we, you, need help. I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. We need God's design in our marriages to be the husbands that God has called us to be. Husbands, if we want to get this marriage thing right, and I'm pretty sure we do, we need God's help. In conclusion, a question. Are you growing in your walk with God in a manner so that you think and act more like Christ towards your wife. So in turn, you can. Learn and understand about your wife in a godly manner. Lead your wife. And as Christ loved the church, you can love your wife. All two and four, the glory of God. Let's take a moment to reflect on today's message. Father, I just pray for each and every one that's here that we'll understand that you have designed male and female in the way in which we should live and that there is a right way for us to live out these designs that you have put before us. Father, be with us. Help us. Guide us. Show us. Push us in every avenue of our lives that we need to be challenged in. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen.